Welcome to a new episode of my series about GNU slash Linux and Ethernet. In today's video, I want to talk about Ethernet transmission line. So let's take a look at it. Here on this slide, you can see a typical Ethernet transmission line. So we have four major components. On the left hand side, we have a processor, which does all the computing we need. Then we have a medium access control or MAC, which gets data from the processor and splits it into various frames. Then we have a physical transceiver or PHY, which takes the digital signals coming from the MAC and convert them to analog signals. And the PHY also does some bus management, but we will talk about this just in a second. And then the PHY outputs some analog signals, which are going to a physical connector, for example, our RJ54 Ethernet connector. But we will see more um, examples later here in the slides. So now let's take a look how these four components are connected together. So between the processor and the Mac, we normally have some internal or external buses. For example, for ARM-based embedded systems, we normally have the H AHB or AXI bus to connect the processor to the Mac. On x86 systems, normally we are using the PCI Express bus to connect the processor to the Mac. And in some embedded systems, we even use something like SPI. Then between the Mac and the PHY, there are two interfaces. So one interface is for shuffling the data which should be sent or which was received between these two. And this interface is called the media independent interface. This interface is called that way because nevertheless, which physical connector we're using on the right hand side, this media independent um, interface is always the same. But there are some variants of the media independent interface. So the standard MII you normally use for transmission speeds up to 100 megabits per second. The downside is it uses a lot of pins. So there is a reduced media independent interface, which uses a higher clock rate, but less pins. For achieving gigabit speeds, we need the gigabit media independent interface, GMII. And once again, to reduce the pin count, there is also reduced GMII or RGMII interface available. So the physical transceivers normally supports multiple of these standards here and the Mac yeah, most of the times also, so you can configure which one you want to use. But for some microcontrollers, there is only an MII or an RGMII interface available. But this is dependent on the yeah, Mac type you're using. And I already told you, the PHY does a little bit more than just converting these digital signals into analog signals. So the PHY also has a register block built into it. And over these register blocks, you can do some configurations like which speeds should be supported or how the, for example, for Ethernet, how the LEDs should be controlled. Or you can read out information, for example, if a link partner is connected to it and which speed was negotiated between the two connections. And these register blocks, you can read and write over the serial management interface or SMI. We will take a closer look at the SMI in later videos of this series. And then between the PHY and the physical connector, we have the media dependent interface or MDI. Okay, so now let's try or let's take a look at some examples how this transmission line is integrated into various systems. So here you can see how this transmission line looks on a typical um, PC system. So on the left hand side, we have our Intel or AMD x86 processor and over PCI Express, we are connected to a networking card here, for example, the Intel i210, for example. And on this networking card, we have a Mac and a Phi built into it. And OK, the physical connector will be also placed on the networking card. So yeah, maybe I should have drawn this box here and not ending here, but hey, never mind. But if you just take a look at this chip here, yeah, so this entity will be the networking card, but this entity will be the Intel i210 chip. Okay, and here is an example for an embedded system. So on the Visnet 
W7500 microcontroller which I will use in my series. The processor and the medium access control is on, is on the chip. The interface between the processor and the Mac is H, H, AHP, the AHP bus. And then we have the MII signal routed out, which is connected to the PHY, and we have the SMI signal. So, and then we have our physical connector. And for example, this is also true for systems like the ESP32 microcontroller. There also a processor and a Mac is integrated into one chip. But for some embedded chips, the PHY is also built into the chip. For example, on the WISNET W7500P, the PHY is integrated together with the Mac and the processor into one single chip. So this is cool for embedded systems, so you don't have to populate so many, um, so many parts on your PCB. Okay, and here is another example which is quite common for smaller embedded systems. So if you have a processor which doesn't have a built-in Mac or Ethernet interface, you can still use an SPI or parallel interface and then you can use chips like the WISNET W5500 or the ENC 28J16 for microchip and these chips integrate a Mac and a PHY into one single chip. Okay, so let's take a look at some connectors we can use. So up to, he, up to the PHY, everything is the same, nevertheless which physical connector we are using. So if we are using twisted per Ethernet, we can use some files like the LAN8710 from Microchip or the DP83849 from Texas Instruments. Then the um, analog outputs of the file are connected to a magnetic transformer and the output of the transformer is then connected to an RJ45 connector. And here let's take a look at a fiber optical ethernet transmission line. So once again, till the PHY, everything stays the same. An example for a fiber optical ethernet PHY would be the DP83822 from Texas Instruments. And then we have our physical fiber optical transceiver or here at the right hand side. And for example, in automotive or in industrial, there is also something called single pair ethernet, which is just using a single pair um, of wires to connect to Ethernet. And here, once again, until the PHY, everything stays the same. And the PHY here would be the LAN 8670 for microchip. And then we have a connector which looks like this here. Okay, so let's talk about the OSI layers to which we can put the various parts in. So the physical connector and the PHY are normally in described in the physical layer, layer 1. The medium access control is typically located in the second data link layer and all other layers are implemented in the processor. So later in my videos I will use the WISNET W7500 chip and here it looks a little bit differently. So the W7500 has a Cortex-M0 processor from ARM integrated into it over AHP, we are connected to the TCP IP offload engine or TOE. This TCP IP offload engine has a Mac built into it and if we want to use the um, hardware TCP IP stack built into this engine, the engine can handle everything up to the um, transport layer which is layer 4. But of course we can also just use the Mac in here then once again this here would also cover everything up to the second layer, the data link layer and all other layers have to be implemented here on the microcontroller. Okay cool, so I guess that's it for today. I hope you've enjoyed the video and learned something. In case you want to support my work you can buy me a coffee on buymeacoffee.com slash for Linux. So thanks for watching and goodbye.